Hello, this is Dr. Alex. Uh, I would like to continue on where we stopped earlier. Now, in the uh, Project Explorer that we created early called the uh, events.lvproj, uh, Lab View Project. Okay, this is the, still in the uh, Project Explorer. Now, uh, you can go to save first. Let's do a save. Now, we have created a VI, right? Under this Project Explorer, we have earlier created a, a VI or a virtual instrument called polling program so currently this vi is empty so let's double click on this and right put some codes in it so you will see this is the lab view front panel so i'm going to do a windows uh, go to windows and i'm going to tile left and right now, now i'm going to create a sim very simple program so i will put a while loop okay it's quite a standard uh, thing that we do I'm going to right click and create a stop button uh, stop as you can see, right click on this iteration terminal, create a stop. Uh, okay, for this for the purpose of this uh, presentation, so uh, just going to resize it a bit larger. Turn off the label. Okay, now I'm going to also uh, create put in a simple case structure, uh, case structure, which I think by now you should be quite familiar already. So by putting a case structure. And uh, I would also want to create a button on the front panel. Okay, I'm going to close to the uh, boolean. I'm going to take one of these uh, OK button. Okay, and I will just rename it. Uh, I'll call this uh, check time. Okay, check time. So which means that uh, uh, when I click on this program, the system will report to me the time uh, timestamp. Okay. So I'm going to click this button. Okay, maybe uh, to be consistent, I would also uh, copy this and change this label uh, called check time. So I'll give it the same name and I'll turn off the label. Okay, so check time. So what I do is that I'm going to connect this uh, over here. I'm going to connect the output of this Boolean output uh, to the this uh, case structure here. So this particular case will have two states, uh, the true or the false uh, case. Okay. So and what I would like to do also, I for the this uh, iteration counter, uh, I'm going to right click and create an indicator because I want to see the loop count. Uh, it which I'll show you in a short moment. Now this loop count here, I'm going to put it here. Okay. Uh, usually I change the size loop count and also this one yeah okay so that uh, later on i want to show you uh, what happens when the program is being ex when it's running uh, what happens now how do we show this uh, well uh, we can then put in the system clock uh, time uh, using the timing uh, palette sub palette here we look for this thing called the uh, get get date time in seconds uh, this the, this one here so right click again timing this one over here okay get the time in seconds right click and drop switch on the label right click on your mouse turn on the label now we will right click and create an indicator at the output here all right so what it does is that this uh and i'll pull this uh indicator to outside yeah Actually, sorry, maybe you can just leave it inside the program as well. Doesn't do much harm. Uh. And just clean up this thing. Okay. So what it does is that uh, this program will iterate very quickly. Eh. As you can see very shortly. Eh. I'm going to come here. I'm going to resize it. So what it does is that it reports the system time. Eh. Okay. This program will just uh, basically uh, returns back the system date time uh, when I click the check. So without further ado, let's uh, go to file, save us, uh, save this program and click the run button. Now you notice that the loop it count will be very fast uh, because I didn't put any wait millisecond delay here. Okay, but so when I click the check time, you will notice that the system will report, the lab view program will report back to me the time as well as the date, uh, timestamp and date of the current time okay i can click again you report and update okay click one more time you can see that the seconds will change uh, right yeah the seconds 
and the loop count is very fast now this program is what we call a polling program so if i were to switch on the highlight execution on my block diagram you will notice that the let view program will continually iterate very quickly each time uh, the program will also check the user uh, user interface buttons uh, for example in this case the check time check time right which is a boolean so currently if the user do not click on it it will return a false so a false and constantly returning a false okay and then you will switch to the false case here which will do nothing eh? now if i were to click on the check time as you can see uh, as you can see over here if i click on this button the boolean button it will switch to true right and let view reports gets the date time in uh date and time timestamp and then re and reflects back on the front panel as you can see over here so click again yep so you reports very briefly okay the date timestamp and then it switches back to the false case again and the loop count will just continue iterating all right so now you can see that this way of programming is not so efficient uh, because your it is not doing anything useful really eh? but the lab view has to just continue to iterate its program eh? and report the 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 iteration count eh? now one of the things that i would like to show you is that uh, if you go to your control panel right let's go and take a look at your task uh, manager eh? okay if i were to switch on your system uh, task right? actually i can i can look it up here or performance information tools right if you click on this uh, under my tool all right uh, i can uh, of course you can do it here maybe there's another way to do it uh, is to let's say if i click on the alternate control delete on my computer right i go to my task manager all right uh, okay so what i did was i just uh, click on the uh, alternate control delete on my keyboard uh, okay to bring up this uh, windows then i click on the windows task manager i can look at the processors eh? now you will see that currently your lab view is actually uh, you can see the performance uh, now over here eh? now you can also uh, observe that the resources is very intense right if you can see the cpu usage uh, okay is very at the, on the high side because your lab view programming is lab view program is it running as you can see so the processor will be at uh high use high you high utilization rate all right so uh okay let's see okay if i were to monitor that if i were to stop the program okay if i stop now you will observe that uh as soon as i stop the utilization just now earlier was at about 20 over percent right 29 percent or something now the CPU usage has dropped to about 2%. If you can zoom in to see, uh, yeah, about 11%. Uh. Okay, just to demonstrate again, if I click run, okay, then I switch back to my CPU usage. Here. Now, do you observe that the program, the CPU usage was very high, about 33%. Uh, okay, because it are uh, 38%, 39 right? Uh, okay, so because the program is running continuously and is utilizing the CPU processor, in a sense, because we are doing a polling, uh, polling of this program. Although, although it doesn't do much, but let view resources has to be uh, allocated and being used by the CPU. Eh. So currently you see that the CPU usage is very high, 32. As soon as I stop it, okay, and I switch back to my uh, CPU resource, uh, you notice that the usage has dropped to 7%, right? Because uh, there's no program running at the background. So this is just to demonstrate to you uh, that uh, in the terms of uh, in lab view if you use what we call a uh, polling okay polling just going to type it here now polling has uh is has is quite a bit of a disadvantages as you can see over here i'm just going to type this thing here right polling right this is a polling program okay this is called polling because it's just checking the system just checks uh whether there's any updates on the front panel let's say so this is a polling program simple program but to demonstrate the effects and the behavior of a polling program uh, to you eh. okay thanks for watching and i'll stop the recording here then we will proceed to the next part which is called event event structure application uh, that to uh, replace this uh, polling 
program uh, 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 approach. Uh. Okay, thanks for watching.